Nebraska high school sports fans, welcome in to a very special edition of the Nebraska Prep Zone Report. I'm your host, Dylan Adams, here today, excited to introduce the Omaha World Herald's All-Nebraska Volleyball Team for 2023. Now, earlier this week, I had the chance to chat with all seven of these very deserving members at the Lauritsen Gardens, who were spectacular accommodating hosts for this year's photo shoot. Now, before we get to it, I have to step back and say, big picture-wise, this sport of volleyball is just in the best place it's ever been in this state. You know, after all the celebration back in August with Volleyball Day in Nebraska, it's really seen nationwide now as the premier volleyball state, and that momentum carried into a terrific high school season. I enjoyed talking with Mike Patterson, our staff writer on this very forum each week about the twists and turns we saw throughout. Of course, we had two nationally ranked teams on max preps to fall and a wild state tournament that began with Papillion La Vista's rivalry upset of Papillion La Vista South and culminated with Lincoln Southwest finally earning its first state title in school history. That was the first Class A champion outside the Metro Conference since 1998, which just happens to be the year I was born. And it's well before all of these seniors' time as well, who we're going to talk to in a second. Now that is how you segue into this year's honorary captain. She led the Silverhawks all season, it's setter Malaya Lawn, who spoke on what this honor means to her. I remember like when I was young, I saw these girls and in my newspaper of like the honorary captains and stuff of Lindsey Krause and everything ahead of me. So... It's just cool being in that same kind of playing field in my years. Malaya was terrific in setting up her teammates all season. She led Class A in assists with 1,067, including more than 100 in her three matches at State and 33 in that final match versus Papio. Her coach, Jessica Kirkendall, said winning State was the only way Lawn was going to go out, and Malaya talked about what it's like reliving that moment at the Devaney Center about a month ago. It means more than I can even say into words. It's just been something that this group has always like dreamed of. Um, we've grown up together, you know, coming from elementary school at Cabot Elementary and then like finishing off with these girls is such a great feeling. I mean, we had nine seniors, so just really going out there with a bang and just like playing together as a team. I think we just had to go into it with like a very um, open mindset of just like we're going to go out there and we're going to play like Southwest Volleyball. I think that um, we've been super close every other year and we've had the team to do it. We just kind of miss like that it factor and I think that this is that is what we had for this team and these girls had so much grit and um, each one of us had like a role in this team and I think that we like filled into that role so, so well. Now after she graduates from LSW, Malaya is off to Marquette to play for one of the premier programs in the Big East and she told me head coach Ryan Tice even made this special trip to Lincoln to watch Lon's championship match in person. He, I didn't even ask him to, he already had it. He's like, make it to Saturday, I'm there. So it was just a really cool feeling and just knowing that I have so much support and the girls back at, um, at the hotel were watching me on the TV because they had a big game the next day. And so it was just really fun and just getting videos from them and stuff, just, it's such a cool, like cool family. Next up is Papillion La Vista South's star outside hitter. It's Nebraska's reigning Gatorade High School Volleyball Player of the Year, Lauren Medic. The senior is a repeat selection on our first team and led the Titans to a 35-2 season. And although this year didn't go their way, didn't finish the way they wanted in the state tournament, she ended up with two state titles and a runner-up in her career. Her coach, Katie Tarman, says she's like a player coach out there on the court with a strong competitive spirit. And I asked Lauren what she thinks is her greatest quality as a player. People like to call me a leader and like they always just be like, no, Lauren, you do this first because like, you know, you, you always do it first. And I'm just like, OK, so I would say that I like I push people to be the best that they can. I feel like that's my best quality is I see the potential in everyone and I want everyone to be at such a high level so we can compete at a high level, you know? And so I feel like that's like, I feel like I do my best to bring out the best in everyone else. So Lauren, you finished um, in the top 10 in Class A all four seasons. Um, you ended up with over 1,500 in your high school career. I know they're just stats, but like, what does all that mean to you when you hear that? Um, it's kind of just like a reward to just see like how much like my hard work has paid off. But like I really couldn't do it without my teammates. Like my teammates are the one who like 
set me in the perfect spot so I can get a perfect kill, you know? And so just having the support of them and my coaches who, like, never stopped believing in me and, like, our team and stuff, which allowed us to be in the top 10 every single year, you know? Now we move on to some of the very best in Class B, including another repeat first teamer. It's Bennington Libero, Olivia Mock. Now I didn't get a chance to speak with Olivia back at the Super 6 photo shoot in August because she had a little more significant life event going on. Of course, that was helping Team USA win gold at the Under-19 World Championships in Croatia. I think it's so cool that I get the opportunities that I um, have been given and to represent uh, USA and my state, I think it's, it's so cool. The senior finished with nearly 700 digs, including 58 in the semifinal match versus Norris. And now, Mock is on her way to being a Husker, and very soon, the Padger is going to graduate early in December and says she can't wait to start the beach volleyball season in the spring. Definitely just getting there and being able to play beach with them and um, getting to know the girls better. So. Reese Booth is our third and final second time first teamer this year after the Elkhorn North senior led Class B in assists with nearly 1,100. Booth says a key to her success was being able to play with the same group of girls for all four years since the school opened and credits her teammates' chemistry for that success. Us seniors have been playing together all four years, so our passers, Haley Wolf, and our DSs have been playing together for so long, and she's done a great job and came so far over these past four years. And then our hitters, Ava Speed, has transitioned from a middle to an outside this year and did a great job out there. Um, our other outsides, our right side, our middles, um, Delaney Bergani stepped it up big. Reagan Walraff, she came in, she's a freshman, and she did such a great job. So I just, I can't do anything without them, so. Reese, of course, is the daughter of Creighton Volleyball's head coach, Kristen Bernthal Booth, and I asked what it's like to play this sport at such a high level in the volleyball state. I was looking at something the other day, and all three D1 schools are all going to the NCAA tournament, and a bunch of other, all throughout the levels, are going to play in the tournament. Um, so I think that's just really, really cool how it's grown here and just nationally. Booth's playing days as a Wolf aren't done yet as she begins her final basketball season chasing a fourth straight state title alongside Britt Prince before she'll ship off to Northern Iowa next year. Dipping back into Class A now, it's time to recognize Papio's stars who made an incredible run to the state final. We start with libero Faith Frame who talked about what it was like transferring from Gretna to such a high level team. Kind of meeting the new personalities and learning what my teammates need from me and what I need from them. Frame led Class A in digs with 618 and quickly became regarded as one of the top liberos in the state. Papio coach Priscilla Peterson says she was like a missing piece to the Monarchs puzzle. And it means everything, especially taking the risk of transferring. Um, it is nerve-wracking, uh, but I feel like we worked so hard as a team from beginning to end, and like the outcome was as good as I would have liked. Frame will be heading to Cincinnati next year, while her fellow Monarch teammate and first teamer, Mia Tiverti, will be at Oregon, one of the Huskers' new Big Ten rivals starting next season. The 6-1 middle blocker was a key anchor to the Monarchs' front row all year and made the jump from last year's third team. Tiverti also joins Papio's Faith Frame and Regan Hickey on the All-Metro Conference first team. Now, unfortunately, some technical difficulties got in the way of our conversation, but I can say Mia had one goal in mind since we spoke at the Super 6. That was to beat rival Pap South, which she helped the Monarchs pull off not once but twice, handing the top 10 nationally ranked Titans their lone two losses of the season. She told me those wins were the highlight of her high school career. Finally, last but certainly not least, is our lone underclassman this season. It's Omaha Westside's right side hitter Ashlyn Paymall, who transferred from Omaha Burke and helped the Warriors get back to the state tournament, a moment that Paymall says she won't soon forget. It was a big thing for me making it to state for my first time, and I think it was great seeing the energy from the crowd and the people and just our parents and everything in general. It was a great atmosphere to play in. You're the lone junior on this team. Can you believe that? Like, what's yeah. that honor like for you? It's such a big honor. Like, it makes me so like proud to be here and it just like puts everything in perspective like how hard everyone has worked to get here and that I'm one of them. Well once again I'd like to thank these athletes for sharing their time and thoughts with me earlier this week and from all of us here at Omaha World Herald we wish them the best of luck as they continue their playing careers. 
And that'll about do it for today's podcast. I'm Dylan Adams saying thank you so much for joining me, and we'll be back very soon with a special all-Nebraska football episode. So make sure to stay tuned for that on the Nebraska Prep Zone Report.